Hello and welcome to Arizona Exploration. My name is Robert Willard. What we have here is three pieces of carnitite. This is a primary ore of uranium. These three pieces are for sale on the website, arizonaexplorations.net. Um, what we are going to do today is show you uh, a little bit about our product and uh, play around with uh, the Geiger counter a little bit. Uh, so Karenite is a primary ore of uranium, it is one of the primary uh, sources of American uranium, uh, far more common uh, in the American Southwest than uraninite. It is a weaker type of ore. Uh, these three pieces average about 0.3% uh, uranium oxide, uh, which is a bit on the low side uh, if compared to uh, French or Congolese uh, uraniums, uh, but it gets the job done. It has to be concentrated uh, before it is milled. As you can see, it is a uh, nice bright kind of earthy yellow. Um, it does appear to be uh, a surface only, uh, like an effervescent, but that is not the case. It does go all the way through the material, usually a sandstone. And this piece here has been cut and you can see how it clearly goes through. You'll also notice that um, it is uh, somewhat powdery and it does like to shed. So it's a very good idea to always uh, use uh, caution when handling these items. Now these are low uh, radiation sources, uh, primarily alpha and beta. It is okay for me to be uh, using my hands to uh, touch these items. However, you will want to wash your hands thoroughly uh, afterward. We have uh, the Ludlum 3 model uh, with a 44-9 uh, pancake. So we'll go ahead and test these and see uh, what we've got here. So we'll do the small one first. We'll set the other two off to the side. And so we'll go up to the times 10 mark to begin with. in about 15,000 counts. I'll go ahead and put them to the side. We'll bring the medium one. We'll do the same thing. This one is also about 15,000. Now when using a pancake probe like this one, it has a mica screen on it. You want to be careful not to actually touch the material with it because you can actually uh, contaminate your sensor. Or if you're uh, rough with it, you can actually uh, break the mica screen. So you want to come in nice and close to it, but not actually touch it. And this one's a screamer. Uh, we can actually do get better. This one should, if you hit the sweet spot, you can get 40,000 on this one. Let me see what I can do for you. There we go. 40K. Let me tell you a little bit about where these specimens are from. All three of them are from the same area, uh, which is outside of Blanding, Utah. It's a mining district called Cottonwood Wash. Uh, that's in the San Juan County of Utah. It was discovered uh, by Mr. Shumway in the uh, Raisin Mountains. 
the uranium there comes all the way to the surface. You can actually see outcrops of kerenite uh, sitting on the surface. Uh, a large complex of mines was developed uh, with a mill, and these were active from the 60s into the 70s. Uh, once mining was complete, the mill was torn down, but the foundations were left remaining. And some of the mines were reclaimed while others were left open. Uh, in the 2000s, uh, when uranium again came into the spotlight, a couple of them were reopened, but no major work was done, uh, primarily prospecting and a little bit of small uh, exploratory production, but no major uh, mines were reactivated. The formula for uh, Karenite is uh, right here. It is uh, potassium, uranium, oxygen, vanadium, oxygen, and uh, water. It will dehydrate. Uh, we are in Arizona, uh, and so uh, all these specimens are dehydrated naturally uh, long before we get them. Uh, it is water soluble, uh, so you will get yellow water if you dump these in the bucket, which I do not suggest you do. Um, uranium uh, itself is highly soluble in water, um, and it also is said to have a sweet taste uh, when mixed with water, uh, which is why in many areas where uranium is present, You'll find places uh, called sweet water or sweet uh, well or uh, sweet springs. Uh, if you're in the American Southwest and you see a place named that, don't drink the water. The other thing uh, is safety. Uh, you may wonder, uh, how can you be safe around radiation? Well, as I was saying, this uh, particular mineral is an alpha-beta uh, emitter. Uh, so you have three levels of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, alpha is uh, completely stopped by your skin. Now, if I had a very strong alpha emitter, uh, like, uh, say, polonium, if I held that in my hand for a length of time, I would get a burn on my hand very similar to a sunburn. Uh, however, it would not go uh, beneath the skin, and it would not uh, harm, say, my DNA even uh, any more than a, a sunburn would. Beta radiation uh, requires something more substantial to stop. Um, a couple of inches of air is sufficient, or uh, aluminum foil will defeat most beta uh, radiation. However, gamma radiation is the most powerful, which will uh, goes through lead, anything really, the earth, concrete. Uh, this particular mineral is not a strong gamma emitter, uh, though it may be mixed with other minerals that are gamma emitters. So, for instance, we established that this one was about 15,000 counts. I'm going to take a piece of paper and place over it. We're going to go back to 10,000. And we will now test it. And now, because I have a piece of paper over, I can actually set the probe directly onto the rock. And you can see that we went from about 15, thousand down to about 10,000. So we lost about 5,000 counts off of uh, our radiation. So that was beta radiation, or I'm sorry, that was alpha radiation. So the next thing we can do is take a piece of metal that I have right here.
Uh, it's nothing more than sheet steel. And you can see it's not even detectable. Back up to 10,000. And there's our 15,000. The other thing we can do, so that what we were doing there was called shielding. What we can do here is simply distance. So right there, I'm a couple of inches, not even the width of my cell phone. I am picking up some radiation, but it's very little. less than a foot and it's not even it's not even moving the dial the same principle is what allows us to ship these materials to uh, you our customers uh, we use several different shipping methods uh, all of our items go through the United States Postal Office who has laws concerning uh, radioactivity uh, we comply with all those laws using uh, special uh, shipping containers and uh, identification called UN numbers. Uh, and that way, the radiation at the outside of the package does not exceed uh, USPS laws. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is notice uh, the powder, the small amount of handling that we have done it has shedded quite a bit. That is why uh, we use uh, black uh, countertops so that it shows up very easily. Um, it stays confined. Uh, this can easily be cleaned up and disposed of properly. Uh, so when you are at your home, it is usually best that uh, you have a display case to keep these in. Uh, most people use a, a simple glass case, uh, something that you can get from Ikea or uh, a furniture store, like a curio cabinet. The space involved and the glass uh, does a very good job of defeating uh, the majority of radiation. Uh, if you do have uh, an extremely powerful piece, maybe you have uh, something from the Congo or uh, something uh, German ur uh, uranite. Uh, you may want to keep that in uh, a lead box known as a pig. But for the most part, uh, most pieces are uh, very much in the, the safe levels and can be easily uh, displayed without uh, such precautions. And especially anything that you, you see here uh, would be completely safe. These items are uh, for sale on the website, ArizonaExplorations.net. Uh, on there is my contact information if you have any other questions uh, regarding uh, these pieces or any other product we have on the site. Uh, feel free to uh, drop me a line. We, beyond uh, radioactive materials, we carry uh, other collector minerals uh, jewelry, and uh, we're broadening out to other items. We want to be your one-stop shop for uh, mineral collecting, rock hounding, and urban exploration. We are a new startup. We started in November of 2020, making us a COVID baby. Uh, hopefully, uh, 2021 will be a better year for us all. I appreciate your time and taking a look at this video. And I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.